Now that we've finished our work with the beginning of the Pythagorean theorem here, you might ask yourself the question, does the Pythagorean theorem work with any triangle? Now you might know the answer to this question already, but I think it's worth just taking a quick look at short investigation related to that. So here we have an obtuse triangle with side lengths of 17, 25, and 38. 17 and the 25 are the shorter two, so let's say we have tried to apply the Pythagorean theorem to that. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the two shorter sides squared and added together. We want to see how it compares to the longest side squared. And so 17 squared is 289, and 25 squared is 625. And we're going to take a look at 38 squared, which is 1,444. 289 plus 625 is 914, which is definitely less than 1,444. Now, as we move over to the equilateral triangle over here, we've got 4 squared, 4 squared, and 4 squared. There's no two shorter sides like there was on the other one and a long side, so of course, we know how this one's going to end up, but 4 squared is 16, and 4 squared is 16, and 4 squared again is 16. 16 plus 16 is 32, and of course 32 is greater than 16. Our last example over here, 6 squared, 7 squared, and 8 squared, 8 being the longest side. So 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 36 plus 49 is 85, and 85 is definitely greater than 64. Now we'll notice here is this particular characteristic where a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. Notice that happens right here in an obtuse triangle. a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. That's going to happen in an acute triangle. And notice that was the case in both of these situations because both of them involved acute triangles. So with right triangles, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, but you can also tell if it's acute or obtuse based on whether a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared or less than c squared. So to fill the blank below here, we have the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to say only applies to right triangles. Now let's start taking a look at a couple of examples of Pythagorean theorem in use. And again, this might be a little bit of a review for some of you guys, if you remember your Pythagorean theorem. That was a really bad sketch of a right triangle. Let me see if that's acceptable. I think that's pretty acceptable right there, at least for me. All right, so we've got a right angle right here. And so the, find the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle if the legs measure 30 feet and 40 feet. So we're going to say this is 30 feet. We're going to say this is 40 feet. And that is the hypotenuse. Let's call it C. I want us to continue our work with the four steps from the last unit. Our first step is the formula. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And uh, for whatever reason, the active board's giving me trouble here. Okay. It's equal to C squared. And so let's plug in our numbers here. So step two, we've got 30 squared as one leg. We've got 40 squared as the other leg. Come on now. 40 squared, and how does that compare to C squared? Okay, so now we've got step three. We're going to work out our numbers, 900 plus 1,600 is equal to c squared, that would be 2,500 is equal to c squared. So now let's just do a little bit of algebra here. To get c by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides, and we get 50 as the square root of 2,500. 50 feet is equal to that hypotenuse. Okay, example number two down here. Find the area of a rectangular rug if the width is 12 feet and the diagonal measures 20 feet. All right, so now we're going to actually calculate the area. So let's put down a rectangle here, and let's 
put some dimensions on it. So we're going to say the width is 12 feet. So I'm actually going to put this 12 feet right here then. And we're going to say the diagonal measures 20 feet. So let's draw in a diagonal and this diagonal right here. And that is going to be 20 feet. All right, find the area. Well, in order to find the area of a rectangle, we know that we have to multiply base times height. Well, we've got the base, we don't have the height, but we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that height is. All right, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And we have, well, let's call this a right here. So a squared plus 12 squared is equal to 20 squared, right, because 20 is our hypotenuse. So that means that we have a squared plus 144 is equal to 400. Now let's do our algebra steps here. So if we're thinking about our steps, we've got one, we've got two, we've got three, and we're going to work out our algebra. So we're going to get a by itself by undoing the adding of 144 by subtracting 144. And so now we have a squared is equal to 400 minus 144, which is 256. To undo the squaring, we take the square root of both sides, and now we get a is equal to 16. All right, so 16 feet. But we're not finished with our problem yet because we are looking at getting the area of the rectangular row, not just the height of the area. So area of rectangle is equal to base times height. Now we know that the base is 12 and the height is 16. So 12 times 16 gives us an area of 192 square feet since it is an area. So there will be problems in which you have to solve for the parts of the right triangle, but then there will be problems where you have to put them into an area problem so it uses Pythagorean theorem and area formulas.